Hello and welcome to Lawrence Live. I'm Dr. Sean Smith, Superintendent of Schools, and I'm joining you on this beautiful fall day with our two athletic directors from our high schools. Let me introduce to my left, Mr. Ryan Bannis, Athletic Director at Lawrence Central High School. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you. And to my right, we have the Wildcats here, Mr. Mike Penrose, who is the Athletic Director at Lawrence North High School. So welcome, gentlemen, Thank to you, Lawrence Dr. Live. I'm glad to have you both here. Uh, Mr. Penrose has been with me before, but we get to introduce our new athletic director this year, Mr. Bannis, at Lawrence Central High School. So, gentlemen, it is fall, and when fall comes, it's athletic season. So let's talk about what's going on this fall at each of our high schools. Let's first of all start, because a little birdie told me you guys both have new digs on your campuses. So let's talk about our new high school multi-purpose stadiums. Mr. Bannis, what, yeah. what's going on? No, lots going on, but uh, about the facility, we uh, first of all uh, need to thank you and, and your school board for for uh, providing that for our students. We mm -hmm. it long overdue and um, you know we have teams that, that use that facility for the last six, seven, eight years that have won state championships mm -hmm. and they now have a facility that's fitting of, of their efforts. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for doing that for mm -hmm. them and for us and um, it's a great, you know, we use it <clears throat> all the time. Our, our performing artists, our marching band gets great mm -hmm. use out of it, uh, as do obviously our, our fall athletes and now our spring athletes coming mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's, uh, I can go on far, for, mm -hmm. for far too long to talk about it, but it's been, it's mm -hmm. been a great addition to our school and, and, and we are thrilled to have that. Mr. Penrose, they're twins. They mirror each other, the facilities. I want both of you to talk about the design and input that we got because it wasn't all myself and the board. We had a lot of input from professionals like yourself. Talk about the process we used to sure. design both stadiums. Well, it first started out with a discussion, mm -hmm. obviously led by you, and uh, we wanted to uh, take a look at other mixed schools, and so mm -hmm. we went out and visited a lot of other mixed schools to see what they had, mm -hmm. and then we talked about what our needs were, and then it kind of grew from there. So um, based on um, the populations of both Ellen and LC, obviously the footprint is, is the same. Mm -hmm. Where they're located might be just a little bit different, mm -hmm. but um, if you walk in our building or, or Lawrence Central, you're gonna see pretty much the same thing. Mm -hmm. And they're both beautiful. We tested it out because the second week, or I believe the third week, the Bears and Wildcats play each other in fo football. So we packed the stadiums. Did, did they hold up, gentlemen? It was it was it was a great night, mm -hmm. um, and it was a great game. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan's uh, Bears uh, beat us 26 to 20, 21. We were driving inside the 30 with 3:30 left. Going on here. And uh, mm -hmm. let's let's just say that we hope to host another game next mm -hmm. week. So if the Bears and the Wildcats both win on Friday night, mm -hmm. uh, we'll be playing at Lawrence North again. Okay. Oh, that sounds like a challenge, doesn't it? Challenge. It sounds like a challenge. <laughs> All right. We love that. A friendly challenge that goes on between our two high schools. But beautiful facilities that we have now for both our performing arts, for our athletic programs that take us to another level. And so we're certainly proud of that. Let's talk about athletics because I think oftentimes people get confused. They just think the glitz and glory of athletics. You guys have some unbelievable student athletes. Let's talk about the student athlete and what does athletics mean to our student leaders? Well, Michael. I tell you what, Dr. Smith, I did some research the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Our general population GPA in 2016 was 2.8. Mm -hmm. um, during that same time, um, our student athlete GPA was 3.3. Mm -hmm. um, the last two years at Lawrence North in 2016, the class of 2016, we had 28 student athletes go on and compete at the next level, mm -hmm. Division Three all the way up to Division One. Their GPA was 3.1. Last year we had 31 student mm -hmm. athletes go on. Mm -hmm. Their GPA was 3.59. Mm -hmm. So it, when you're a student athlete, you learn time management, mm -hmm. you learn goal setting, you learn mm -hmm. working together, and that translates into the classroom as well. So it's no surprise that our student athletes are also our leaders in the classroom as well. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bannis, Mr. Penrose touched on college athletes. We have a lot of kids that are gonna play division one, big time, athletics as an athletic director in your office how do you support all of that well it's primarily we get a lot of support from those kids families too mm -hmm. and, and supporting with the parents reaching out to us and us working with them it's it's a partnership with moms mm -hmm. and dads and, and the families in general and and we like you said we're a carousel for co college coaches coming in mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. and, and our coaches are always accommodating to them and and where our office is always open to them. But what we like to do is 
Um, fortunately, there are some of us that have had that experience of being mm -hmm. student athletes mm -hmm. in college, and we try to help ch that translate into our conversations with those kids about what they're wanting to do and what it was like for uh, some of us that got to do that Absolutely. And, and help them understand you know, not, not a lot has changed in, in, over the mm -hmm. years in terms of just what the experience is like to be a student athlete mm -hmm. in college. Uh, the facilities and all that and the recruitment and all that has changed. It's mm -hmm. evolved, but learning how to manage your time and how to do all those things when you're finally on your own, that's, that's still all pretty much the same. So right. um, we, we have a lot of, all of our coaches for the most part have, have, have had that experience as well. Right. So we feel very confident that we know how to guide those kids in the right direction and give them a, a good outlook on it. Well, for both of you, you could be sitting in your office, you tell me Urban Meyer from Ohio State, these mm. big coaches, they actually, Harbaugh show up at our places, do they visit? Yeah, well, there's an article in the Indianapolis mm -hmm. uh, Monthly, mm -hmm. uh, talk, <clears throat> excuse me, talking about how Coach Miller at IU, one of the first places he walked into was Lawrence North High School. Mm -hmm. So uh, Tommy Allen, my uh, boyhood uh, friend and mm -hmm. classmate uh, walked in our office. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of big time colleges come in. Absolutely. As athletic directors and administrators, because you, you, you have a lot of sports, uh, let's talk about your day. W what does your day consist of for both of you? I mean, what, what time do you get in? Because last time I checked, when I leave a football game, you know, somebody's got to close up the place. <laughs> and I'm looking at the two guys <laughs> that take care of all that for me. But for the public, what do you do as an athletic uh, administrator for us? Well, <laughs> it, it, it's kind of funny because you never you have an agenda about what you want to accomplish, mm -hmm. but you can usually kind of just push that off to mm -hmm. the side because there's always something that we need Absolutely. to take care of. Um, our day usually starts around 7.30 this morning. I had mm -hmm. a head coach's meeting, mm -hmm. um, and before that meeting, I had to go to Bob Evans and make sure my, my, <laughs> my uh, people were taken care of. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically from 7.30 until if we have an event that night, I think Ryan can uh, attest to this, uh, our busy time is after lunch, right? Because that's when you have to prepare for for an mm -hmm. event. Uh, you have to get make sure all the event workers are taken care of. Make sure uh, your gates taken care mm -hmm. of. Make sure officials are taken care of. Make sure the playing surface is, is safe. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, like you said, usually the last people to leave are usually the the ads and the and mm -hmm. the custodians, making sure that all the kids are picked up and and uh, then you can go home. So. Ryan, Mr. Bannas, add to that. What, what about you? Well, we're also very fortunate at both schools to have great assistant ADs. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. And Mr. Hernandez and Alfie for, for me at, at LC and, and Mr. Zeller over at Lawrence North. Mm -hmm. I mean, those guys, plus their experiences go back. You know, I don't want to date them, but, you know, <laughs> they, are, they, they, they know what they're mm -hmm. doing. And they have great relationships, not only just – uh, with Mike and I, but with our with our kids and with our with our families, you know. Right. But in terms of the day itself, we rely on those guys as well an awful lot. And mm -hmm. with me being in my first full year mm -hmm. uh, doing this, uh, he's been a huge support for me. But for example, like today, um, as soon as I leave here, we I head back to school and we get ready for Ben Davis mm -hmm. host a sectional football game and mm -hmm. um, all the media uh, that's going to be coming in to cover that game with with both schools mm -hmm. being as good as they are right mm -hmm. now. Um, just dealing with that takes mm -hmm. up a lot of time yes, it does. Um, and making sure your credentials are in place and you have the, the security in place to mm -hmm. make sure your facility is ready to take on that type of an event. So um, it's it's uh, in, in this job, you don't have a whole lot of downtime mm -hmm. to uh, really just kind of sit and, and look at things at your desk. Mm -hmm. that, that pretty much for me comes when I go home. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's it's one thing about doing this job is that it is it, it, you're around kids all the time. You're, you're, you're around him all day, pretty much all the time. So mm -hmm. um, it, it is a great job. Yeah. I really enjoy doing it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're in great hands with these two experienced leaders in our athletic uh, departments. Both of them were former teachers and coaches, uh, athletes themselves, and they lead our athletic department, which are very critical to our community. I mean, we have a community that has a long history of success with athletics and state championship. We want to brag about that. You see that when you drive around. We've done well as a community, and we want our student athletes to have the best opportunities to be successful in school and out of school. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank both of these great uh, leaders that I have uh, in my organization that support our student athletes for joining us, and thank you for watching this segment of Lawrence Live. Hello and welcome back to Lawrence Live. I am so honored today, ladies and gentlemen, to bring to you a very special guest. I have Mr. Uh, Matt Miles, who is our Director of Transportation for the District. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, 
this is the gentleman that helps me make a decision when we have snow days. Mr. Miles, you do, don't you? Uh, I do. A lot As of pressure there. It is a lot of pressure, oh, yes, isn't it? As director of transportation, he drives the entire district with his team to make sure that the roads are safe. And at about 4 in the morning, you give me a call, don't you? It's, it's an early start. It's a, a dark early start that really goes on overnight. And uh, we talk about 4 in the morning. About 4 in the morning. Start collecting information right. and, and right. making decisions. Well, students, I won't give you his cell phone number, but this is the guy that helps me make that decision, okay? <laughs> and he does a great job with that. Mr. Miles, as our Director of Transportation, you have the responsibility of transporting all 16,000 students that we have in the corporation. At one point or, or another, all of our students will utilize our transportation. That's also during school and after school. How do you do that, Mr. Miles? Talk to us. It's Tell a big, us what you do. It's a big job. It's a big job. But it's also a privilege. There's a lot of responsibility. As you said, Dr. Smith, nearly all of our students ride the school bus at one point or another. Mm -hmm. So we have our to and from school routes, of course, to start mm -hmm. off, which is our primary uh, job number one. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to make sure we've got all of our students routed proper addresses, mm -hmm. all the information. Communication is very big part of that, mm -hmm. making sure parents understand uh, what time the bus is going to come, what bus number it is, working with drivers, working with students, working with the school. But uh, the to and from transportation is just a part of it. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of students that may be participating in uh, extracurricular activities, sports, mm -hmm. performing arts. Certainly we have a number of field trips that we're privileged to be able to take. So there's a, there's a lot going on in our office. It's never, there's never a dull moment. Let's look at some of the statistics when I think about your division. Mr. Miles, you have 200 plus buses? We have just over 200 buses. Okay and they are all different ranges of size and location. Correct. I'm trying to figure out how do you know where I live and what bus I need. T give me, let us in on some secrets. Sure, These guys little know. secrets. How, how do you do that? A lot of hard work, uh, <laughs> a lot of hard work. Our process starts um, from the moment someone signs up and registers mm -hmm. for school, of course, uh, whether they be a new student, an enrolling mm -hmm. kindergartner possibly, um, a new student to the district. As we get that information through from our Skyward process and the enrollment process, mm -hmm. our team jumps right on it and gets, gets to work on that. We have to watch for uh, certainly the address of that student. Mm -hmm. We have some students that um, may ride only in the morning to school or mm -hmm. only ride home from school, so we want to make sure we have good information there. We want to be very efficient with what we're doing so that if a student's not going to ride the bus to and from school, we want to make sure we, we don't route that student mm -hmm. um, so that we can best utilize all of our resources because they are precious. Um, some secrets there, um, we do we do use that information. The better information that we have, the, the better decisions that we mm -hmm. can make. So we want to make sure we're maximizing the number of buses, that how we use our buses, mm -hmm. how we use our drivers. Mm -hmm. uh, drivers right now are a precious, precious we'll resource. Yeah. Uh, so I'll come back to that. Yeah. Uh, but we want to make sure that we've got that information from the student. Uh, it takes us a couple of days to get a new student on a bus and, and get that communication back to the family so that everyone knows um, when it's going to start and we have all the uh, the important details as to the bus stop location and, and uh, who's going to be transporting the mm -hmm. student. Certainly our drivers do a great job mm -hmm. of helping us when they also communicate with families and make sure um, to introduce themselves to a new student and maybe welcome someone that may be a younger child mm -hmm. uh, to the bus for the first time. Those are all very important things. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, we take a lot of pride in it. We do. And we travel every inch of our township and beyond. Now, someone told me you guys have a map and you know where every student's located. We sure do. Pop you. Is that, we sure that's do. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's right. a fact. Like, we'll put that out there. So <laughs> we're excited about that because at the end of the day, every student's important to us. And I know Absolutely. your division takes great pride in making sure every child is safe and gets home to and from school every day. Mr. Miles, you also have a transportation facility that you have to run. Mm. You had those 200 buses. I'm quite sure some of them don't start up right away and they have to be worked on. Correct. Talk a little bit about your facility. Absolutely. Well, our facility, um, we're excited to say that um, we've outgrown it yeah. because of district growth. Um, Families wanted to move into the community over the last uh, 15 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. Our facility was originally built for a fleet about half the size of what we have now, and we have squeezed and pushed and pushed mm -hmm. the limits of, of our space, um, but we use every square inch of our facility. Um, from a standpoint of a bus, maybe not wanting to start on mm -hmm. a cold winter day, those types of things. We've been fortunate over the last several years to um, improve our technology, which mm -hmm. helps us. Mm -hmm. uh, we're now able to get alerts. If a mm -hmm. bus has a, a, let's say a battery is running low, mm -hmm. our maintenance crew will actually get an alert on that bus prior to even getting it to work mm -hmm. so that we can take a look at that. We can get the proper steps made to either move that driver into a different bus mm -hmm. for the day 
work on the bus before it goes out, those types of things. Um, we have a maintenance crew of about seven full-time mechanics mm -hmm. that do nothing but take care of our school buses. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they, they do a great job and they, we try to be as proactive as possible. Certainly we've got a preventative maintenance program in place mm -hmm. for our buses to make sure we're uh, not waiting until a problem may come up, but trying to catch things as early on as possible or before it even happens. Outstanding, Mr. Miles. Now, Mr. Miles, you have 200 plus individuals that are very important. The students know them as our bus drivers and everyone hears about there's a bus short, driver shortage. Is there one? There absolutely is a right. bus driver shortage. A lot of competition for bus drivers. A lot drivers. of competition for All bus right. drivers. Well, look in that, in that camera there and tell people what they can do if they're interested in being a bus driver absolutely. in Lawrence Township. Well, our families are our best resource for bus drivers. All right. That's number one. We would love to have grandmas, grandpas, uncles, aunts, cousins, neighbors, co-workers that may be looking for a part-time job. It is a great job for someone looking for part-time work that wants to work when their kids are in school mm -hmm. or the, the, the students are in school, but have some nice breaks as well. If you're interested in that, you can find us online, ltschools.org. Go to our human resources page. There's a link there to apply for a job. You can find the bus driver page on there. If that doesn't work for us, certainly give us a call at our office, 317 423-8400. We'll help you out. Right. Come see us if and that doesn't work. You'll meet Mr. Miles personally. I can Absolutely. guarantee you if you're interested in being a bus driver. Mr. Miles and his team is so vital to our school corporation. They do a wonderful job in transporting and taking care of our students. I also know you got some very nice LT buses that are over there too. Bears We're very, okay. very you proud of those, of those buses. Also? Absolutely. Okay. I'm very proud. It's our of secret those. weapon when we go out on the road. We want our kids to ride first class and certainly be proud of our school corporation. Mr. Matt Miles, our director of transportation. We're glad he's here today, ladies and gentlemen, and we want to thank him for all that he does and his team to take care of our children. So thank you for this segment of Lawrence Live. Hello and welcome back to our last segment today for Lawrence Live. I am so excited because I'm joined by the pride, the marching pride of Lawrence Township is joining me today. And so I have with me. Hi, um, I'm Zoe McGill. I go to Lawrence Central. I'm Kim Wilson. I go to Lawrence North. Peter Chung, Lawrence Central. All right. And they are the drum majors for the marching pride of Lawrence Township. Now, you know, I'm going to ask the question. <laughs> drum majors, what does that mean? Uh, Zoe, you want to take that one? <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. um, well, logistically, it means that we are the ones that get to stand up on podiums and conduct the band. Mm -hmm. So we get to be in charge of, you know, timing and tempos and musicality. And then also a little bit of behind the scenes. We are, um, you know, leaders for the band as well. All right. Now, I got to stop because I've been superintendent for four years and you guys are really good. I'm just gonna put that out there. But I, I have been in the county for 30 years and I know the history of the marching pride of Lawrence Township. I know the history of our bands and between our two high schools, we have several state championships, national championships. Mm -hmm. Now I'll let you on a little secret. When we have the parade, the 4th of July parade, everyone loves for Dr. Smith to be there. Mm -hmm. But you know who they really come to see? Not me, they come to see them. The marching pride. <laughs> yeah. Man. Okay, we have an incredible band, marching band. Let's talk about that because I don't think people understand what does it take to put together a marching band? How much time do you guys put in? Um, I haven't, Peter knows the exact amount of hours, but there are a lot of hours that go into it. I believe um, not a lot of people understand the aspects of it. It's People would assume it's almost athletic even, but it's more like everyone who loves to do music, anyone short, tall, and anyone is qualified to do marching band. Um, it's really just to do what you love to combine, you know, <laughs> working out, getting big and buff or whatever, but um, along with, you know, just enjoying music at that same time. Mm -hmm. Others, Peter, do you have any? Um, yeah, I think in terms of hours, the hours we dedicate to the activity, it's it's well beyond 400 hours that mm -hmm. we come together uh, through rehearsals, through eating lunch or dinner together, going to competitions together. There's just a lot. There, it is a lot of time commitment, and sometimes it kind of it may or may, may not bog you down at times. But it's all about pushing through it, mm -hmm. just focusing on getting better with each other to be able to perform for the audience. Right. And that, that's what fuels me, at least, to be able to perform for a huge crowd who's there to see us. Okay, mm -hmm. and they love it. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, I got an opportunity to travel with the Marching Pride, and they're, they're very humble. 
but we were invited to the Rose Bowl. Yes, indeed. And we were in the Rose Bowl parade, and I got an opportunity to see these young people march at the Rose Bowl. Now, I want you guys to take Dr. Smith through in our audience. When you guys turn that corner, and you, you know the corner I'm talking about, mm -hmm. and you one. point down that parade route, yeah. tell me that experience for you guys this past year. Hmm. Well, uh, um, yeah, I was drum major last year too, so I was conducting the, during the parade, and honestly, as we turned the corner, since I was marching backwards, <laughs> I didn't initially see just how big the crowd was. I only got to see that after we passed, and um, at that point, I mean, it had already happened, but it still felt surreal just knowing that, you know, all of those people were watching us and then millions more on their TVs. Yeah. Right. Talk uh, about the experience, guys, all of you. Yes, my experience, I was a marcher last year. I marched trumpet, and this experience, it blew me out of the water as soon as we turned turn that corner there were stands and cameras and flashes from cameras all over the place it was a very splendid experience um, we got to play music for the crowd they enjoyed it we had choreography while we were marching they enjoyed it I enjoyed it I mean I gave smiles they gave me smiles it was just a very wonderful experience for me mm -hmm. Peter uh, I was a marcher too last year I marched the uh, baritone actually mm -hmm. It was a bit of a struggle for some of us holding that up. It definitely hurt because <laughs> yeah. uh, we had to hold it up for like 10 minutes uh, yeah. because we just had to like keep playing for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, but when we got in the moment, it kind of, it passed really quickly because it wasn't about the like the pain or the effort. It was more about just taking in the moment because looking at all those huge floats mm -hmm. and just thousands of people, including like hundreds of people marching along with us, all those bands there with yes. us. It was just it was just something that everyone knew it was a huge thing to do a, a big deal to be a part of and i think we all embraced it and we all you know in the future will look back onto it and just really appreciate that moment yeah. you'll never forget that experience will you guys yeah. and certainly the community won't forget that experience because it put us on a national level mm -hmm. and it took a lot of logistics and a lot of hard work guys <laughs> yeah. and let's talk about hard work now because you're in your competition season yes we are so let's talk about that what are you guys doing in preparation for that what's the next steps tell us what's going on you don't have to let all your secrets out because you have competition <laughs> but where are we guys where do we can we expect next yeah um we do, yeah, we are in competition season. We have uh, semi-state this weekend. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just to prepare for that, obviously we've been preparing all season since July. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, these last couple weeks, we, you know, it gets real. Like, this is the end. We really have to push and keep practicing, you know, you know keep, keep our focus in, too. A lot of the times uh, it's easy to get lost in the excitement of competition, yes. but we just have to stay focused. Mm -hmm. Okay. Give me more. What's the prediction, guys? What, um, what, what can I expect? The from the hard work aspect, you know, we're dealing with weather and we're outside, and it's just the, for me. For the, this will be my fourth year as as a marcher in general. It's just the conclusions for this are they it rushes just like that, mm -hmm. and you know if we use every minute, every moment that we have, we get to use outside whether outside and it's nice and decent, but we still get a little chilly outside, but, or we're inside and we're practicing music or we're marching while we're, while we're um, playing music as well, usually turn, tuning and doing all, all sorts of technicalities. So we're really trying to use every moment that we have to prepare for these moments. I mean, yeah, it's like coming towards the end and we've definitely put in the work. Coming up into semi-state though, I, I'm not too worried. And I, I think we'll do pretty well this weekend. and. I think states well within our grasp. Okay. Uh, yeah, as well. Well, yes. I love the confidence, and as one of your number one five, you know I'm a fan. <laughs> I do. They don't know it, but I'm always behind the scenes, and I did follow you to the Rose Bowl, and I'm going to follow you to semi-state and to state because, ladies and gentlemen, we are so proud of our students. We have something that is very unique to our community, as that is having one of the top marching bands in the state of Indiana. Matter of fact, one of the top marching bands probably in the region and maybe even in the country, <laughs> the Marching Pride of Lawrence Township. And ladies and gentlemen, we can't be more proud of our students and their effort. These are the student leaders. The band doesn't work without you guys. That's what you told me at the beginning, correct? Right. They are the leaders that organize it and make it work. And ladies and gentlemen, after this segment, we'll have a short piece of their performance and I think everyone will be extremely proud of their efforts. And we wanna wish you guys good luck as Thank we you. move into the semi-state and state.
Thank and you. beyond, and wish the Marching Pride success. They are the pride of our community. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for this segment of Lawrence Live. I don't belong here 